Okay class, today we're in section 2.8, Rewrite Equations and Formulas. 2.8, Rewrite Equations and Formulas. Before, you wrote functions and used formulas. Now, you will rewrite equations and formulas. Key vocabulary, literal equations, formula. The equations 2x plus 5 is equal to 11 and 6x plus 3 is equal to 15 have the general form ax plus b is equal to c. The equation ax plus b is equal to c is called a literal equation because the coefficients and constants have been replaced by letters. When you solve a literal equation, you can use the results to solve any equation that has the same form as the literal equation. Example 1. Solve a literal equation. Solve ax plus b is equal to c for x. Then use the solution to solve 2x plus 5 is equal to 11. Solution. Step 1. Solve ax plus b is equal to c for x. Write original equation. ax plus b is equal to c. Now remember you are trying to solve for x. That means you're going to get rid of the a and the b to get the x by itself. Now read it mathematically. a times x plus b is equal to c. In other words, you're going to treat the letters as if they were numbers. So we're going to subtract b from each side because we're going in the reverse order of the order of operations. So to get rid of this b, I'm going to subtract it. So here I'm going to say minus b minus b. And when I do that, I end up with ax is equal to c minus b because the positive b and that negative b canceled. So now I've got ax is equal to c minus b because over here I had a minus b. And the c and the b, they can't be added together because they're not like terms. So we end up with ax is equal to c minus b. Now, I'm going to assume that a cannot be 0, so then I can divide each side by a. Because if I divide here by a, the x will now be by itself. So I divide by a on this side and by a on that side. So I end up with x is equal to c minus b over a. Now step 2, use the solution to solve 2x plus 5 is equal to 11. After doing that, I end up with x is equal to c minus b over a. That's what we got here. Now I'm going to substitute 2 for a, 5 for b, and 11 for c. Okay, now why am I doing that? Because here it has the general form. 2x plus 5 is equal to 11. That's the same form as this. ax plus b is equal to c. So the 2 is my a. So where the a is, I put the 2. The 5 is in the same position as the b. So where b is, I put 5. The 11 is in the same position as the c. So where the c is, I put 11. So I end up with 11 minus 5, that's 6. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the solution of 2x plus 5 is equal to 11 is 3. All right, now for those of you who may be confused on how we solve this little equation, we're going to break it down for you uh, step by step. We got ax plus b is equal to c. I want to get this x by itself. So I'm going to use all the rules I've learned in section 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, and 2. Point, uh, that was it, 2.7, to help me solve this equation. All right, I want to get the x by itself. This says a times x plus b. So I start with my addition and subtraction first. This is a positive b, so to get rid of it, I must say minus b on this side, and then minus b on this side. All right, now what's a positive b when combined with a negative b? That goes to zero. So I'm left with just a 
times x. Then here I have c minus b. I realize that c and b are two different terms. That means they cannot be added or subtracted. So all I can do is represent what's there. So what is there? c minus b. Now I have a times x is equal to c minus b. So I want to get the x by itself. So this says a times x. So what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So I'm going to divide both sides by a. Now what is a divided by a? That is 1. So I'm left with just 1x. We know there's a 1 there that we don't see. And that's going to equal to c minus b over a. Okay, now if you were confused on how we plugged in, that's really simple. They gave us the original equation, ax plus b is equal to c. ax plus b is equal to c. And they told us to, they told us to use this equation, 2x plus 5 is equal to 11. So 2x plus 5 is equal to 11. Now match everything up. You can see here that the a is 2. That's why the 2 is there in place of a. You can see here that the b is 5. That's why in place of b we put the 5. And you can see here that c is 11. That's why in place of c we put 11. Two or more variables. An equation in two variables such as 3x plus 2y is equal to 8. Or a formula in two or more variables such as a is equal to 1 half times b times h can be rewritten so that one variable is a function of the other variable or variables. Example 2. Rewrite an equation. Write 3x plus 2y is equal to 8 so that y is a function of x. In other words, solve this equation for y. Write original equation. 3x plus 2y is equal to 8. Subtract 3x from each side and when you do you end up with 2y is equal to 8 minus 3x. Divide each side by 2. After dividing each side by 2, you end up with y is equal to 4 minus 3 over 2 times x. So, you have taken the original equation and, and you have solved it for y such that x such that y is dependent upon x. All right, notice they're not showing you every last little detail or every last step. You are expected to know this by now, and you would have known it by practicing, practicing, practicing. All right, but to help out those of us who still might be a little bit lost, here we go. We got 3x plus 2y is equal to 8. I want to get the y by itself. So that means I must get rid of this 3x term, and I must get rid of this 2. So my rules say... I get rid of the plus 3x first. So to do that, I'm going to say minus 3x and minus 3x. All right, that's what they told us here. Subtract 3x from both sides. So we're going to do that. So 3x minus 3x, that's going to go to 0, so that's gone. And I'm left with 2y is equal to, now I have 8 minus 3x. These are not uh, alike terms. So therefore, all I can do is represent them. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll write down 8, and I got a minus 3x. That's all I can do. All right, so the next step is to divide each side by 2. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to divide by 2 here, by 2 here, and by 2 there. Now notice, I know to divide because this says 2 times y. Well, what's the inverse or the opposite? of multiplication, division. So every part gets divided by 2. 2 here, 2 here, and 2 there. Now what is 2 divided by 2? Well 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I'm left with just 1y. And once again we know that 1 is implied. There's a 1 sitting there that we don't see. But we don't write it because how many y's do you see? 1. And that's equal to 8 divided by 2. What's 8 divided by 2? That's 4. That's where the 4 came from. And then we got 3 divided by 2. So we just leave that like it is. Or we can write it as 1.5. 1.5 1 
but you're going to find out that in, in algebra most of the time it's best to leave it as a fraction so minus 3 over 2 times x and the reason for that is because you're going to learn later on that as a fraction it's easier to graph as a fraction it is easier to graph the slope okay so that's our final answer y is equal to 4 minus 3 over 2 times x example 3 solve and use a geometric formula the area a of a triangle is given by the formula area is equal to one half base times height where b is the base and h is the height a solve the formula for the height h b use the rewritten formula to find the height of the triangle shown which has an area of 64.4 square meters solution area is equal to one half base times height all right, I want to get the height by itself, so that means I'm, I must get rid of that one half and that and that uh, base, that b. So we're going to multiply each side by two. Okay, we multiply each side by two, and we end up with two times a is equal to base times height. Now we're going to divide each side by h. When I divide by h, the b would be by itself. So I divide by h here. Excuse me, I divide by b because I want to get the h by itself. So I divide by b here. And divide by b there after doing so i end up with h is equal to 2 times a over b so from there i'm going to take this formula and substitute so i'm going to substitute 64.4 for a and 14 for the base in the rewritten formula so h is equal to 2 times a over b so I end up with 2 times 64.4 over 14. And when I simplify that, I end up with 9.2. 2 times 64.4, I multiply it out. And then whenever I get, I divide it by 14. And I end up with 9.2. All right, now for those of us who are confused on how to solve this formula, we're going to break it down for you once again in more detail. Area is equal to 1 half base times height. I want to get the height by itself. That means this 1 half has to go and the base has to go. Once again, I'm applying everything that I've learned from 2.2 up to 2.7. So the first thing I want to get rid of is this one half. Well, we learned to get rid of a one half through multiplication, we multiply by the reciprocal. To get rid of a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 over 1. So on this side, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 1. And on this side, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 1. Okay, so now, multiplying by 2 over 1, I get that 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 1 is 2. So that's going to give me 2 over 2. So this is going to cancel, and that's going to cancel. So I'm left with b times h. On this side, I got 2 times a. And there's a 1 up under a, so I got 2 times a. Well, that's 2a. And then 1 times 1 is 1. So there's no need to write the 1 up under, up under the 2a. So now I have 2 times a is equal to b times h. Once again, my goal is to get the h by itself. So to do that, this says b times h. So to do that, I'm going to, to divide by b. Now, what is b divided by b? b divided by b is 1. So I'm left with h is equal to 2 times a over b. And now, once I have that, now I can begin to plug in. They told me that the base of the triangle was 14. So in place of b, I'm going to put 14. And they told us that the, what else? They told us that the area was 64.4. So in place of A, we're going to put 64.4. And then from there we solve.